What animal fact ruined that species for you? It was initially horrifying to learn that male lions, upon taking over a pride, kill every single cub within the pride. It ruined that honorable and brave image of lions. But upon learning more about lions it made sense. Most males don't survive to adulthood, and when they take over a pride their average tenure is typically only two years. Killing the cubs causes the females to go into heat. The males don't enjoy killing cubs or even know why they are doing it. They are being driven by a powerful evolutionary instinct that was bred into them. It ensures their gene line is propagated. It also ensures that the strongest genes are passed along. If pride males aren't strong enough to defend their bloodline, their genes won't be extended. It is easy to see how lions evolved into such powerful animals. Fur seals rape penguins. Now, I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of seals, but I thought, as a general rule, they were mostly all right. I know some of them could hardly be called cute, elephant seals, anyone, but I didn't think they had any major skeletons in the closet. That's until I got to know them a little better. Well, specifically, fur seals. You mess with penguins, you mess with me, pal. Look at you, lording it over the beach. Seek help mate. They're just seals, right? Swimming around, eating some fish, having a fun time with their other seal pals, getting eaten by great white sharks. Well, that's not all fur seals get up to. Sometimes they need a release, and Mrs. Fur Seal isn't there to oblige. Who's the unfortunate victim? Penguins. Poor, helpless penguins. Jesus, look at you all standing around, call the fucking police or something. Fur seals on the subantarctic Marion Island, in the Indian Ocean, were witnessed carrying out these lewd acts by researchers, who were actually there to document the elephant seals. Nice surprise, I guess? They viewed this act several times, and detailed the grisly proceedings. The first time marine biologist William Haddad and his team saw a seal rape a penguin, they were shocked. By the fourth time, they were convinced this bizarre behavior was becoming a trend. By the tenth time, they barely looked up from the newspaper, not an actual quote. Here's a bit more info, no, no, don't thank me. In all four cases of what Haddad and his collaborators call sexual coercion, a seal chased, captured, and mounted a penguin of unknown sex, then attempted to copulate with it several times with periods of rest in between. The birds remained pinned down for the duration. Penetration could only be confirmed in one instance, though it was likely in all of them. Birds have one hole called a cloaca that serves excretory and reproductive functions. In three of the instances, the penguin was released after the act. In one tragic case, the seal killed and partially devoured its victim. Great. Rapists and murderers. One particular incident was described as such. The seal ran up to the penguin and bumped it down. It lay on top of the penguin and started thrusting its hips in a copulatory fashion. The seal's erect penis was clearly visible. Two bouts of thrusting in a copulatory fashion was intermitted, sick, by a break during which the seal kept the penguin pinned to the ground with its flipper, but did not seem interested in it. Eventually, the seal got off the penguin, and the bird was able to get up and join a group of fellow king penguins on the beach. Well that's more detail than I ever wanted or needed to know. Oh well. On the bright side, at least. Nah who am I kidding, there is no bright side. Damn nature, you scary. You know, I had no problems with pandas before I found out why these sympathy sucking beasts are going extinct. Look pandas, your cousins who drink Coca-Cola Classic instead of eating bamboo, are going extinct because the planet is getting warmer and their habitat is literally melting under their feet. These tough, cola-loving creatures have to sometimes swim for hours to just find dry land again. But you guys aren't going extinct because of that. China isn't melting under your feet is it? No. Is your food supply getting smaller? No. Last time I checked bamboo grows like fucking weeds in China. So why are you guys going extinct? Because you are too lazy and picky to have sex. 
We literally show you guys panda porn just so you will get horny to procreate and a lot of times that doesn't even help, damn it. You guys are dying because all you want to do is eat bamboo all day which is the equivalent of chips in nutrition. You could go hunting and eat actual food but no. And even when the stars do align for you guys to bang you are too picky to actually do it. So I have gotten some questions and concerns in the comments that I feel need to be addressed before more people come to me with the same comments and concerns. Pandas are indeed losing their habitats. Pandas diets are actually shit nutritionally. I wasn't kidding. Whether you like it or not, that is a fact. Panda sex is a lot more complex than I made it out to be, but of course that is why I linked sources so everyone could get a more in-depth view of their difficult mating process, which you can find above the edits. Finally, I am aware of why panda sex and procreation is difficult for them. I am also aware of the reasons why pandas eat bamboo rather than hunt for food. Take some of what I have written here with a grain of salt, and utilize the links I have provided to get a better idea behind my complaints. Anthropomorphism is a thing, so what I deemed lazy and picky in my post was the projection of human traits onto a very humble and beautiful animal. I do not in fact hate pandas. I had always thought my love for my cat was unconditional until I was scraped by his penis. After staring at my burning forearm for a while, I decided I must have had suffered a hallucination. I just couldn't believe it. I rushed to my laptop, raring to unravel every mystery about this little monster. And this is what I learned. What are the barbs? The male's penis is barbed with more than a hundred tiny hooks, made of keratin, a tough fibers protein normally found in nails and claws. As the male withdraws, the hooks scrape the walls of the vagina. Why is a male cat's penis barbed? Male kittens are not born with barbed penises. Mar Vista Animal Medical Center, a veterinary clinic in California, says that cats reach puberty when they are about six months old. The barbs develop on the penis at this point because their purpose is to aid in reproduction. 1. They help scratch out any competing sperms from previous mating. 2. They also induce ovulation, the pain from scraping stimulates the female's brain. In response, it releases a specific hormone, which triggers the eggs to begin maturing. 3. They keep the female cat from escaping before mating is complete. She may attempt to flee because cats are more likely to be loners than dogs and resent the intrusion to some point. Mating is also painful for female cats, both because of the barbs themselves and because the male cat begins by biting the back of the female's neck. Needless to say, his right of free access to my bedroom has been permanently deprived. I really wish I could unlearn this fact. Sheep are gross. They pee and poop anywhere and everywhere. A few years ago, when we moved to a rural area, we got two sheep to mow our lawn. We first got the idea while we were still living in the suburbs and had read about people who used sheep to mow their lawns. The praises for doing this were many. Sheep are cute. They will munch lawns down to a desirable, short height. And unlike cows or other animals, their poop comes out in little pellets that disintegrate easily into the soil. We became fascinated by the idea, and were really excited when we could finally put it into practice. We fenced the sheep off into a large area with cattle panels that we would move periodically. Since we have coyotes, wolves, bobcats, and all sorts of other predators in the area, we moved the sheep to a covered pen at night. When we first got them, I was worried that the sheep would be hard to train as they weren't known for being bright. However, despite all the jokes out there about sheep, I was pleasantly surprised that they were not dumb as I thought they would be. Before the end of the first day, I had trained the sheep to eat grain out of my hand, and to follow me when I held a handful of grain. It made it really easy for us to get them into the pen and lock them up for the night. Within a few weeks, I had trained the sheep to come running when I bayed at them. But the one thing I didn't count on, and what no one ever mentioned, was how the sheep would pee and poop everywhere. I mean everywhere. While most animals, even pigs, will not eat where they pee and poop, the sheep didn't care. The sheep didn't look around to decide where to pee and poop. They would go whenever and wherever they get the urge. They never stopped what they were doing when they needed to go. 
They peed and pooped while lying down. They peed and pooped while standing. They peed and pooped while walking. They peed and pooped while eating. They peed and pooped on the grass and then seconds later munched on the same grass. They peed and pooped in their grain bowl. They peed and pooped in their water bucket. They peed on my foot before I got more careful about not standing behind them. They peed and pooped on each other. They were so gross. You have no idea what it's like to clean sheep poop out of their food bowl daily. Or to have to chisel the poop out of their drinking bucket in the winter when I went to fill their water. Before I had sheep, I thought they were cute and cuddly creatures. Now when I see sheep, I just see a gross peeing and pooping machine. The only good thing about how a sheep pees and poops is that they don't discriminate. They are equal opportunity poopers. Mongoose. There's a whole neighborhood of them living in a graveyard, which is right in front of my workplace, police station. I see them all the time. I know this species possesses the skill of killing snakes, which to me, sounds quite badass for an animal this size. I'm impressed with their audacity. So I didn't have any problem with mongooses until say, three days ago. I was in my office, minding my own business, browsing Facebook posts and it's when I came across a video where it was showed that in some village people were catching mongooses out of a graveyard because, according to them, mongoose digs into graves and eats dead bodies. Over dozens of mongooses were shown caged and moved away. I never thought of this. Surprised? Is this information correct? So after a few minutes, I asked a colleague the same question, why do I see mongoose in this graveyard? Because mongoose digs holes into the graves to feast on the freshly buried bodies. And I thought, oh my goodness. How come I didn't know of this? I mean, I did wonder about their presence around here but never had such anticipation. Buried corpses decomposition and ingestion is obvious and all. But Mongoose's involvement in the process struck me as a shocker, I must confess. Bad ass or not, Mongoose suck. You know these lovely little creatures? Cute little ducks? Well it turns out, they're basically all rapists. Duck populations usually have fewer females than males, so females can be choosy with who they pick to mate with. They only choose the best males to mate with. The males that don't get chosen aren't too happy with this. So they usually resort to gang raping female ducks. Groups of males will surround a female and takes turns violently mating with her. Sometimes the female even dies. Ducks have been doing this for so long, their genitals have evolved for the task. The females have evolved so it's harder to rape them, and males' genitals have evolved to combat those females' adaptions. It's basically a genital arms race. The males have technically been winning, because about a two-thirds of ducklings are born out of rape. I'll never look at them the same again. The fan favorite chimpanzee. I mean, they can draw, dance, do acrobats, solve math problems, and they can learn skills not just from us, but from each other as well. Pretty impressive. But the fact of how insanely and frighteningly violent they can be, and unpredictably too, is the stuff of nightmares. It's no surprise that chimpanzees can kill, but that's not the scary part. Chimpanzees will often mutilate the bodies of their victims, whether other animals or humans, by gouging on their faces, dismembering their limbs, and even tearing their testicles, as seen in the gruesome ST. James Davis attack and the horrifying attack on American tourists in Sierra Leone, which National Geographic featured, that left their driver, Isa Kanu, dead with a heavily mutilated body. Not known to a lot of people, but chimpanzees enjoy eating meat. And what is their favorite type of meat? Neighboring monkeys. Chimpanzees will regularly form groups and go on the hunt for colobus red monkeys. Once they take a hold of one, they throw it from a treetop down to its death, then climb down to eat it. There are also recorded cases of cannibalism among chimpanzees, although rare. They also on occasions eat their young, sometimes in front of their mothers. And there are recorded incidents of chimpanzees targeting and killing human babies. Chimpanzees also engage in territorial disputes over resources and mates, 
often leading to wars that could last a few years, like the Gom Chimpanzee War. In these wars, chimpanzees will attack, kill, and sometimes kidnap neighboring groups of chimpanzees. And as mentioned above, often mutilating them in the process. The strong apes also regularly abuse their female counterparts, who are more than often ranked the lowest in the group. The reason is not exactly known, but it is believed to be for mating rights and exclusivity. Chimpanzees may be smart and funny, but they definitely have a dark side. Such innocent, captivating, adorable creatures with their soft feathers and clumsy webbed feet. They were my absolute obsession in seventh grade. Hell, even my friends knew me as, the duck, because I identified as one for a full year. I was the duck before I was Michelle. That was until I learned that they had corkscrew penises. You've probably seen this in a meme or your dirty-minded uncle told you during a Thanksgiving dinner, but these swimming birds have more to their, birdiness, if you catch what I mean. They literally have male parts that look like corkscrews but move in and out like springs when they're taut. Corkscrew. Penises. Let that sink in for a moment. I still love them. But they're evil. They're the Hannibal Lecter of animals. Otters kidnap baby seals. They rape the baby seals. Then they drown them. Then they rape the carcasses. Then they eat them. Before finishing the meal, there's also a chance of some hot, sexy necrophilia a few more times. Fine, this picture is of river otters. I bet they're all kind of bastards. This is an adult firefly. It's a hot, humid summer evening and you're just relaxing in the backyard with your fiancé. You hear the chirping of crickets, the buzzing of mosquitoes, and then you see these little bugs dazzling in the dark with their blinking lights. Your soul mate tells you how romantic and special this scene is and how cute fireflies look, but what they don't know is that behind their charming facade these pretty insects are ruthless killers who hide a dark past. This is what a firefly larva looks like. Yes. It's eating that poor snail, and it's doing it in a horrible way. Most firefly larva species are specialized predators that feed on slugs, snails, worms and other larvae by injecting digestive fluids and numbing agents in their body with their mandibles. This allows them to paralyze the prey and liquefy its remains so they can enjoy their meal. These fierce predators usually live in the soil and come out at night to hunt. Larvae have a lifespan of about two years whereas adults live just for a couple of days and their only purpose is using the blinking lights on their abdomen to find a partner and mate. Next time you see a firefly just think about what it used to look like before it turned into a fully developed adult. Dolphins. I used to love them. Smart. Adorable. Off on a monkey tangent for a little bit. Monkeys have prehensile tails. They can move them, curl them, grab things with them. It's sort of like extra hand. They're incredibly useful appendages on primates. But not on dolphins. Dolphins get prehensile penises. Imagine a monkey tail that can also perform penisly duties. And can retract, a bit like cat claws. Oh and looks more like a giant pink carrot than a tail. They also spend a fair bit of time masturbating their giant, retractable, carrot hand tail penis. Male dolphins have been observed using rocks, other dolphins, a live eel, a scuba diver attempting to feed it, a beheaded fish carcass. If a dolphin jerking off its giant, retractable, carrot hand tail penis with a headless fish doesn't creep you out at least a little bit, you're not totally human. This is a platypus. Cute, isn't it? Unfortunately the male of this shy, semi-aquatic, mostly nocturnal species of egg-laying mammals is, in addition to being cute, equipped with a what they call a spur. It's an inch long, and is used by the male during mating season to stab its rivals into submission. However it will also stab you if you annoy it. So never annoy a platypus. Trust me on this one. Not only can it can stab you so hard that it may actually get stuck, flapping about with this spur buried an inch deep somewhere in your flesh until someone comes along and physically extracts it from you. You will probably need someone else to do so. Because of the pain. A pain victims describe with terms like immediate, sustained, and devastating. 
you see this spur is attached to a modified sweat gland containing a venom said to cause a truly horrific and unbearable sort of agony. And while most venomous animals might leave you in terrible pain for a paltry 7 or 8 hours the effects of being spurred by a platypus can last up to a month. Yes, one entire, actual month. By which point of course the fact that it is never fatal simply becomes an added twist of the knife rather than something to be thankful for. Oh, did I mention painkillers don't work either? Call me naive but I imagine there are few, if any, human sadists so terrible that they would be moved to keep someone alive in torment for a month merely for being an annoyance, but clearly the platypus laughs sardonically at such soft-hearted foolishness. Annoy him at your peril. For my part I've never been able to look at these creatures in the same way again after learning what they're capable of. My perception of them has been ruined ever since. I love chickens. Still do. But they do bad, bad, bad things. They can eat each other. For some reason, domesticated hens are prone to cannibalism, attacking their housemates by pecking away at an injured bird's feathers, devouring its flesh and eventually, killing the attacked bird. Cannibalism is a learned behavior that can spread quickly through a flock. Poultry have a tendency to imitate each other, so when one member of the flock begins aggressive pecking, others will follow suit. If cannibalism is not closely monitored, the resulting losses to the flock due to flesh injuries and death can be quite high. There are several ways to prevent this but the most curious solution is, red-tinted sunglasses, designed especially for henhouse chickens. They work. Most likely, chickens are opportunistic in their cannibalism, they attack only when they see that another chicken is bleeding, and go after that chicken. By putting red-tinted lenses over the chicken's eyes, the birds cannot as easily tell the difference between blood and other things in their surroundings, and, in absence of blood, remain docile. The glasses aren't used anymore because they had to attach them with a pin shoved through the chicken's nostrils. Another answer is to feed them meat. Oddly, if they get meat they're not so likely to eat each other. Speaking of docile. Chickens gang up and attack owner after she lets them out of coop. And here's an article about a man who was killed by a chicken. A cock, to be precise. Man stabbed to death by chicken. In the article, the cock had had a knife attached to its talons for a cock fight. My favorite line. A California man has reportedly suffered a gruesome demise after an accident involving a metal-enhanced cock. Look at this otter. So cute, right? Don't be fooled by his face, though, the reality isn't as cute. In short, otters are, to put it kindly and concisely, jerks. Like, really? Do you believe necrophiliacs, ransoms, and rapists are cute? What about a disease that causes brain inflammation, bone lesions, ulcers, and abscesses? Yep, all those things are from otters. Rapists and necrophiliacs. Male otters are very aggressive when they mate. During the process, they regularly bite the faces of female otters and hold them underwater, sometimes leading to drowning and or bleeding out. This isn't even confined to their own species, they also do the same with baby seals. Not only are they dangerous when mating, but also they may even continue to have sex even after the seal or female otter's corpse is a week old. Ransom. Imagine a woman and her child out in grocery a store. After leaving, a man walks up, grabs the child, and pulls out a pistol. He says he will shoot the child if the woman doesn't give him the her food, and that he can get away with it. This is exactly what happens with otters, especially if food is short. A male otter, if he can't find a meal and gets impatient, may grab a baby otter, drag it underwater, and demand a ransom of food from its mother. Valley Fever Otter-human interactions are rare, but this makes you thankful that it is. Valley fever is a fungal infection that causes brain and heart inflammation, skin ulcers, abscesses, and bone lesions. And guess what? The culprit, Coccidiates amidus, is carried by, you guessed it, the sea otter. Does that pair of sleeping otters holding each other's hands in order to not drift away seem so tranquil now? If this isn't considered messed up, I'm not sure what messed up means. Of course I would do hamsters. Ever since I was little I wanted one. 
I mean, what little kid didn't? They were so cute and fluffy. I would beg my mom for one every single day but she would usually tell me things like, they stink so very bad or, you already have a dog or even the all-time classic, they poop quite a bit, you really want to clean up after them? It wasn't till later when my mother snapped and gave in to telling me the tragic tale of how her hamsters began, disappearing, until she found out the mother was eating her young. Needless to say, that scarred me out of wanting a hamster. Ever. Poor child Hallie already lost her innocence. Ever since then I cannot look at hamsters without being slightly scared and reminded of that horrible day. Please leave your story in the comments, I would love to make a video on them in the future also, don't forget to like and subscribe to you never miss a video.